cell membrane and then move with the whole complex by their own activity as seen here in the serum. Alternatively, single viroids can step out of a cell, as can be seen here on an enterocyte, and then move away into the serum or the substrate. The behaviour of the endobiont works in exactly the same way in other living beings, like here in blackcurrant juice or gooseberry juice. A preparation of extensive squamous cell cancer of the lower jaw exhibits viroid cultures with respective cell destruction. The cell contour shows vesicles being built on the edges, which proves the disturbed membrane behavior is due to pathological processes in the nucleus, as can be recognized by the irregular coloring. In comparison, the opposite jaw section, that was in an apparently healthy condition, was examined and cultivated. However, the cell complex shows that after two days, intracellular antibiotic parasitic growth can be seen, on the lower right of the picture, that is causing slow cell destruction. These observations confirm the long-assumed opinion that cancer is not a local, but a causal problem that affects the entire organism. The proof that these particles must be viroid in nature is found in this infected fibroblast culture, in which these particles appear like small foreign bodies in their intra- and extracellular spaces. The same cultures were also exposed to a galvanic current in order to study the reaction of the viruses. As can be seen, the virus particles immediately detach themselves from the object. The purpose of white blood cells is, amongst other things, to cleanse the serum and the cell membranes. As can be observed here, leukocytes scan the membranes of the enterocytes by moving in an amoeba-like fashion and briefly, they are even stuck together. The migratory behaviour of immune competent cells, through chemotaxis, has led to the enclosure of this tumour cell by a wall of several layers of lymphocytes. It is this multi-layered wall structure that proves that the defence cells can communicate to each other on a chemical level that must be based on signal molecules of the cell membrane, which give the appropriate stimulus for a carefully targeted migration effect. These pictures demonstrate the interlinking of a T lymphocyte with a tumor cell. The surface enlarges cryptically, while otherwise the membrane of the lymphocyte remains smooth. After the lymphocyte has separated itself, the destroyed tumor cell shows a major membrane defect, and the perforin trail points to the nucleus, which has been dissolved. The cytoplasm changes into a crystalline state, and the cell death is inevitable. Such crystalline signatures also appear in dried serum drops, if the patient is in the precancerous state. This phenomenon can therefore be used to diagnose a developing cancer. This is the well-known phagocytosis procedure, whereby a viroid is transported first by endocytosis into the marginal region, and then into the enzymatically more effective central region where it is neutralized.
This cell is full to bursting point with endobionts and cannot sufficiently fulfill its decomposition task any longer. The cell bursts and releases its contents into the serum, allowing the environment to be recontaminated by the freely moving endobionts. With the universal ergonome microscope, the cell division of a promonocyte can be observed in all stages of the ongoing mitosis. The prophase chromosomes emerge from the nuclear material. The metaphase chromosomes forming the equatorial plate. The anaphase daughter chromosomes move apart towards the spindle. The telophase chromosomes reorganize to form an interstage nucleus. And finally, the shaping of two daughter cells with a complete membrane constitution. Of special interest here is a transfer and growth of the vesicles located on the membrane, from the original cell existing before the mitosis to the daughter cells. This means that cell defects, their viroid infection and other defects are passed on, leading the way to rampant growth processes. In order to determine under which conditions such processes take place, an experiment was carried out in the so-called Olbrich chamber, where a blood sample was subjected to a galvanic current. The cell seen in the upper left of the picture is ruptured, whereas the cell on the top right contracts briefly. The conclusion to be drawn from this experiment is that by disruption or collapse of the membrane potential, the cells lose their ability to fulfill specific physiological tasks. Therefore, the presence of the endobiont in the blood, along with its quantity and degree of deformation, is an indicator of how disturbed the patient's environment is and allows conclusions to be drawn on his state of health, in particular regarding the initial stages of cancer. Cells are the basic elements of life, islands of order in the midst of a physical world. This order is maintained, amongst other things, by communication via the cell membranes. In an extraordinary research project, primitive vesicle membranes made up out of fatty acids were exposed to a magnetic field. Interference structures became visible on the membranes near the contact points that varied according to the applied current and fused together when they got too close. This experiment proves again the utmost significance of electromagnetic influences on membranes. This low formation of infrocytes can only be explained by the altered electrical charge on the membrane caused by the electromagnetic processes. This phenomenon indicates liver disturbances and danger of thrombosis. Monocytic tumor cells show a remarkably agile forming of tentacles as can be seen in this culture experiment. Under the influence of an electrostatic field, the tentacles are immediately cast off. This reaction also proves the effect of electrical fields on cell physiology. Endobiontic symbioses are not unusual in nature, as this culture of green algas paramecium show which is to be classified as physiological. The rampant growth of this mold culture of Corticum wolfsi by a further species of fungus has to be classified as pathological. In both cases, it should be kept in mind that both algae and mold fungi are subject to specific cyclical changes which are dependent on the variable external conditions of their environment. Normal algae of the Eugalina gracilis family in a nutrient solution have an elongated